In today's video, we're going to be talking about frequency separation. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time here, my name is Dan Quintero, and I am a commercial photographer based in Sydney. And today I want to talk to you about an advanced editing technique called frequency separation. Now, frequency separation is an advanced technique. However, it's not a difficult technique to use. In fact, some of you watching this uh, are probably already using it, but if you've never heard about it, or maybe you've heard about it before, but you don't know how to use it in your images, then this is going to be the video for you because I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to show you how to set up Photoshop in order to use it and then how to apply it to your images. And then later on in the video, I'll share a link with you where you can download an action uh, where it sets up Photoshop for you automatically. So frequency separation is nothing new. It's been around for years and it was originally developed for skin retouching. So it's just an advanced and a better method for getting uh, rid of things like blemishes or slight discoloration in the skin. But it's not just limited to that. Most people know it just for that, but it's you can use it on other textures as well. So I've used it on things like leather, I've used it on fabric, uh, sheet metal, plastic glass, all sorts of different things. But in the context of what we're talking about today, we're going to refer to it and I'm going to show you how to use it to do skin retouching. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what it actually is. So if I was to try to describe a frequency separation in a sentence, it would be this. The ability to extract color and texture from a surface separately. Now, I know that that's probably not going to make a lot of sense to you and you probably just need to see it. So instead, we're going to jump onto the computer and I'll show you exactly what that means. Okay, so here we are inside of Photoshop and this is the image that we are going to be retouching. But before we get to this image, I've got this other collection of images that I've made because I want to show you how frequency separation works and it's going to be more obvious using this image and then we'll go on to uh, retouch the portrait. So uh, this is just a collection of four different images. I've got some sandpaper, I've got a basket here uh, and then I've got some denim material and then I've got these shoes and what we're going to do is we are going to extract both color and texture separately from these three uh, images and we're going to place it on the shoe. Now <clears throat> the normal way uh, that, well, the way that a lot of people think that they should do this is by maybe creating a, uh, a new layer and using the stamp tool uh, to then maybe just copy from one area and then just copy it onto the other. But as you can see, when you do this, the stamp tool is grabbing both the color and the texture. Okay, so although you could do this and then fiddle around with the color settings to try and change that orange into back into blue, for example, then that's quite a tedious job and you're never going to get it right. So yes, you could do this, but this is not um, this is not how we're going to do it. We're going to do it in a much, much smarter way. So let's get rid of this layer and we are going to run an action. Now, I could show you how to create your own um, frequency separation action, the steps that are involved, but pretty much uh, anyone that has created one of uh, a, a frequency separation action follows pretty much the same steps. And so there's a million different ways or a million different places that you can get these uh, uh, actions on the internet. But I'm going to point you to one from Aaron Nace in Flurn.com. So if you don't know Aaron, Aaron uh, does amazing Photoshop uh, and Lightroom tutorials. He's an absolute genius. And if you've not uh, heard about him, then you should he head over to Flurn.com. I'll, I'll put a link in the description and I'll also put a link to his um, frequency separation action, which is the one that I always use just because it's really easy to install and it just works really nicely. And I've already got it installed on my computer. So uh, when you do install it, you'll get this uh, option of running in an 8-bit or a 16-bit. Most of the time, you're going to be running in 16 bits. Uh, these images are 16 bits. So this is the one that we're going to run. So we're going to click on that and we are going to click play and a whole bunch of stuff is going to come up now. Uh, this is going to give you some uh, some information in here. It's just informational purposes. That's all it is. Just click continue. Now, this is where you need to pay attention. At this point, it's going to be applying a Gaussian blur over the top of the image. Here is the point. Um, as, you, as you know, denim has texture. So you can see that in here that the texture has been blurred out. You can only see the color. The same thing with the 
uh, sandpaper. Not so much with the basket. You can still see the pattern there of the basket. But what we're going to do, the whole idea is to raise this slider or push it to the right as far as you have to so that you no longer see the texture in the images. We're not, we're not going to worry too much about the, um, the basket here because it's... Um, the, uh, the difference in color is quite extreme. Uh, but if you have a look at the denim and the sandpaper, you can no longer tell what it is. You can just see color. So in this case, it's about 6.6. .6. You could go all the way if you wanted to. Um, I wouldn't go beyond maybe, you know, 14, 15. Um, but in this case, if we go on to something like, say, you know, even less than that, maybe, you know what, let's, let's do, let's do 8.2. So we're going to click OK. And once we do that, uh, we click again some more information uh, that will come up in here uh, about how you use frequency separation, but I'll take you through this in a second. So we're going to click Continue. Now, what you'll find is that the action has finished and now you've ended up with this, um, this group of layers that exist in here. What you need to pay attention to here is these two letters so you've got lf and hf so lf is low frequency that stands for color okay and high frequency is texture okay now as we saw before uh, when we tried to use the stamp tool to copy the texture from the sandpaper onto the shoe you notice that it was bringing everything it was bringing the color and it was bringing the texture at the same time so what we're going to do now is because we only want the texture, which is the high frequency, we're going to click on the high frequency, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we are going to pick the uh, clone stamp tool by pressing S. And then we are going to select a section. So I'm holding down the option key. And then I am selecting a section where I want to copy from. And now I'm going to be uh, painting over the top of it. Now, one of the things that you need to remember is that when you are using frequency separation, you need to change the um, the sample layer from all layers, which is normally what we use, uh, to current layer. Okay, so that needs to be current layer only. And when you do that, you will notice that as I paint the texture now, okay, let me just grab something from a little bit more of that side of the picture. As I'm painting now, it is retaining the color. So only the texture is coming through now. Okay? So this is really, really, really handy. Okay? So, and you can see, whereas before, it, you were getting both the color and the uh, the texture, but you were also getting a flat color. It wasn't, it wasn't responding to, if you can see here, because it's a curved uh, surface, you can see that it's brighter on the top than it is on the bottom. So it's maintaining that. It's only changing the texture. So that's why this is such a, a cool technique. Now, let's grab, say, from the denim. So we're going to sample from the denim here. And now we are going to be just pasting the denim. And again, you can see that that, that gradation in the color is maintained. Okay. So that is actually looking much more realistic. Okay. That could actually be a product. But let's say that now we wanted the texture from the denim, but we wanted the color from the sandpaper. Well, then we go to the low frequency separation. And now we sample from the sandpaper. And now instead of the texture, it's going to bring the color. Right? We've already got texture there. We've got that denim. So what's going to happen? It's going to paint over the top of the denim. So now we're changing the color of the denim. Okay, and hopefully you're starting to see now why this technique is so cool because you can get really, really creative. I mean, imagine being able to do this um, for skin and we'll see how, how that's going to work out in a second, okay? But as you can see, that actually looks like a really realistic mock-up. So let me just turn that off. And obviously I'm going very fast here, but if I turn it off and on, you can see that that's a very sellable, um, sellable sort of version of the shoe. Let's just play around a little bit here. It's... Um, Let's go for the high frequency. So again, we're going to grab texture and let's grab this um, sort of basket um, weaving texture and let's just put it onto the actual rubber itself and just see how that works. Now, botch that up a little bit there, but let's just undo that. And just uh, I'm, I'm doing a very terrible job here because I'm going so fast, but you can see 
how it maintains the white color, okay? But the texture is coming through. So, how cool is that? This is, this is the, the first time that I saw this, uh, it just blew my mind. Um, as you can see, that actually looks quite cool. Now, you could also take down the, the um, opacity uh, if you wanted to play around with it, but you do need to understand that when you're changing the opacity of uh, a frequency separation um, objects, then you need to do it at the actual group level itself. If you do it at any one of these levels, then it's going to get you're going to get this really weird sort of uh, effect. Okay, so you can see that there. That doesn't work. But if you go to the actual group layer and you bring down the opacity, you can actually bring down the opacity. Now, it brings down the opacity for each uh, everything that you've done. So you may have to do several um, several instances of frequency separation if you wanted to just um, uh, control the opacity of one particular section by itself. So anyway, I wanted to show you this here because it's much more obvious than doing it on the skin. But now that you understand this, Let's jump on to the, uh, this photograph that I got. This is a, a, a stock image that I found. And what we're going to do is, I'm just going to unlock it because I like to unlock things. Uh, but we're going to, again, play this uh, frequency separation, the, the FLIRN frequency separation action. Uh, click play. We're going to go continue because we know all that stuff. Now, in this case, we need to work out how much we need to move this dial to the right so that we lose the, uh, we can't see detail anymore. So we're going to keep going a little bit more. Okay. And just because of the lighting, I think it's uh, the, the level of uh, detail there is quite extreme. Uh, so we're going to go quite a high number. Let's go for 19 here. Okay. So we're going to click OK and uh, continue again. And once again, we've got our group of low and high frequency. Again, low frequency, we're talking about color and high frequency, we are talking about uh, texture. So now that we've got uh, that set up, let's just uh, zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And what we have is uh, we've got a couple of little, uh, I'm not sure if there's a pimples or, or, or what, but we're going to uh, remove these. Now, again, if I was to do this in a uh, using the stamp tool, <clears throat> in fact, let's create a layer. Let's put it up there, actually. And we're going to go to the stamp tool. We're going to create uh, we're going to change that to all layers as you normally do with the stamp tool. And let's say that I wanted to uh, remove uh, these little veins that we've got in here. Now, if I wanted to sample from another area, I would have to really be careful to make sure that the color of the skin didn't, didn't change. Otherwise, what would happen is if I sample from, say, up here, which is this is sort of clean skin, but if I sample from there and I go to apply there, you will see that it actually leaves it makes it you've got a color change so it doesn't blend properly so then you would have to go and try and find you know somewhere else to, to sample from but it, it's not as clean as it, as it could be so we are going to let's get rid of this layer now and we're going to go to our high frequency separation because we're trying to get rid of detail okay so it doesn't matter now if in high frequency and uh, again i'm going to change my sample to current layer only it doesn't matter that this is a different color I'm going to sample from here and I'm going to apply here and you'll notice that it gets rid of the blemish but it doesn't change the color okay and let's do this one over here while we're there as well so that is a little bit maybe say from here and then let's do that okay and it just leaves that color okay so that that is a much more accurate way let's do some of this other stuff here let's go again high frequency um, let's change. So we've got some clean skin here. We've got to get rid of this pimple. So we're going to sample from here. And we're just going to change that there. And then we're going to do that there. All we're copying is the texture. That's all we're doing. Okay. So we're leaving the color as it is. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay. There we go. Now, low frequency. This is what we change the color. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to uh, we wanted to copy this color here and, and sort of apply it to this reddish area that we've got over here. So then we would sample from up here somewhere somewhere in here where you've got uh, a clean bit of skin, and we would th then apply over the top. Now what, that's obviously not the right spot to sample from, 
But the, the thing that I wanted to sh uh, sort of make you understand is that when you are changing the color, you're not changing the texture. Okay, so let me see if I can find a spot here that will become more obvious. So let's say that I want to change the, uh, we've got a little bit of blemish in there. Uh, let's say that I wanted to change it, uh, the color from that to something darker. Now you can see that it's not getting rid of the blemish. The blemish is still there. You see those little dots? Okay, that's still there. In order to get rid of the blemishes, which is detailed to so texture, we have to go to the high frequency uh, layer. So we sample, and then we can get rid of the, the, the frequency or the, um, the the texture. Okay, so high frequency again is going to fix up little blemishes, color issues. You fix with the low frequency so hopefully that makes sense we've got a section down here as well right so let's uh let's go to low frequency let's say that we wanted to retain for whatever reason that's a scar there and we wanted to retain that but we want to change the color to something a little bit lighter so something like say what we've got over here this bit of skin here so we're going to sample from there okay as you can see the the, the obviously that doesn't match it. it's an extreme just to show you but you can see that the scar is still there it's just brighter Okay, let me try something a little bit more subtle. So I'm changing the color there, but the scar is still there. If I wanted to get rid of the scar, I would have to go to the high frequency because I want to sample clean skin from there. And then I can get rid of the scar. The redness remains because we haven't changed the color. In order to change the color, go back, sample a, a clean bit of color or similar color, and then you can just go over the top. And that looks a lot better. Obviously, I'm rushing this just to give you an idea of, just to show you how this works. Um, anyway, so that's frequency separation. I hope you, um, I hope you do end up using this because it's a really powerful way. It's a much better way to do skin retouching. So this is going to take you from, you know, being a good skin retoucher to a more professional level. So professionals will take the time to do this properly. Obviously, I've just rushed it, but if I was to take, you know, the next sort of 45 minutes to work on this image, uh, I'd be going a lot slower and a lot more careful. Uh, but the results would then uh, show that you, you would be able to tell that it was a much better edited image by using this method than the limitations that you have just with the normal clone stamp tool when you work on a non-frequency separation layer. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. I hope you guys practice. Go to flurn.com, download the... Um, the action that um, that I mentioned before, I will put a link in the description, and also check out the um, the other videos by by Aaron while you're there. Because you know, if you haven't heard of him, he is an absolute genius, and you're going to learn a lot from him. I've learned a lot from him, uh, so make sure that you head over there. And if you have any questions, again, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that I, that I can. Uh, but I do encourage you to go and try out this technique. Okay, so hopefully all of that made sense and it was helpful to you. And if it was helpful, it'd be great if you could click the like button and maybe consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I make videos like this every week to help you with your photography. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, make sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell and that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And more importantly, if you have any questions about any of the stuff that I covered in here, do leave them in the comments section below. That is the best place to get in touch with me. Otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms and you're going to find all the links in the description. And if you want to download the Photoshop action that I showed you earlier, you're going to find the link in the description. And in next week's video, I'm going to show you my entire process for editing a portrait or a headshot, start to finish, which also includes uh, frequency separation. So if you don't want to miss out on that video, make sure to click the subscribe button. Anyway, that's everything that I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.